Right. I, you know, I grew up on a farm and I uh, didn't spend a lot of time in English class listening. <clears throat> but um, I had a, a situation in my life where <clears throat> my name is David Abraham, and it's not really Abraham. Like a lot of uh, immigrants who came into this country, <clears throat> when my grandfather came here, his name was changed from Hakim in Arabic to Abraham. Because in those days, uh, when a young Arab boy, when someone asked a young Arab boy, what is your name? He would tell them his name and who his father was. Well, his father's first name was Ibrahim, which is Abraham. <clears throat> but his name was Sleiman Hakim, Solomon Doctor, if you translate it to the English. But <clears throat> when he came in, they had him down as uh, Sleiman Hakim as his middle name, Abraham as his last name, and it stayed. And people <clears throat> always thought I was Jewish. And I'd have to explain, no, I'm not Jewish, I'm a Catholic Arab. How is that? And I'd have to go through the story. <laughs> well, <clears throat> when, when, I, when I retired, and I, was a, I started in education in 1962 as a teacher, and I left in, in <clears throat> 1992 uh, as, a, uh, uh, as a superintendent of schools. <laughs> well, when I got done, I, I started doing jobs as, as, a, as an interim superintendent, and sometimes I went in as an interim principal or whatever, whatever. And there were times when, again, I'd have to explain. And so somebody said to me, why don't you write a book? And so uh, how I got into this thing is, and how, what I would advise anybody who wants to be a writer, you start with something you know. Start with you, okay, your life or whatever. And while you're writing, <clears throat> like I do a lot of rewriting all the time, no matter how many times I go back, I find, like, I find that I should have said this, I could have said that better, blah, blah, blah. But <clears throat> um, in building the plot, okay, the first, the first book, my father's seed about my grandfather, <clears throat> why he came here, okay, how he came here, and, and uh, how his life progressed while he was here, trying to infuse the old, the, the old ideas of the old world with the new world, okay? And uh, how he could do this, because it's called thy father's seed because he did not want to dishonor his father's word. So the book is really about, and it progresses through <clears throat> how the challenges that he faces uh, as a, a young Arab boy here uh, who, who is forced to uh, engage with the, his new home and the, and the culture of his new home and still maintain an honor to the old ways, to his father's, his, his father's work. To the point where, okay, uh, when he was <coughs> in his <coughs> late teens, uh, he came here at 16 years old, at his late teens, uh, he meets a young girl and he falls madly in love with this young girl. And she with, with, with uh, Hakim, that was then his, my main character is Hakim. <clears throat> but he can never marry her. Because when he was five and she was three, they were betrothed by their parents. He would not dishonor his family by doing, uh, saying, I'm, I'm marrying someone else. So he broke it off with the young lady. He ended up sending for this young girl that he was betrothed to, had never seen her, had never seen her. When she arrived, they married, raised a family, and uh, I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> things, things work out. The book was, was so well received, okay, uh, that I decided to go to my next book, which was about the, uh, my grandparents on my mother's side, who, who also came here at the turn of the century from Italy why they came here, how they came here, uh, and, and basically, again, it's, it's a fight to uh, maintain, maintain the old ways, but still within the new ways. And, and for example, my great-grandfather, uh, because there was a cultural difference uh, between he and, and, and the girl that he loved, she was wealthy, he was a poor, poor farm boy, a uh, tenant farmer, and she was the daughter of a, my great-great-grandfather who was a wealthy uh, landowner. And he said, 
you know, the tenant farmers were not to cast their eyes upon his daughter. Well, you know how kids are. You tell them, don't do that, they do it, you know. So anyway, the two fell in love, and she is sent to the United States to get away from him. He follows her, and, and he searches and searches until he finds her, and they marry and, and raise a family. But even though he was ostracized as he grows up and he has daughters, he begins to tell them, you can't, do this. if you're Italian, you will marry Italian, you know, whatever, whatever. And so it's a story the plot builds. How, how is this going to, how is this going to, and, and one of the things that I do with, with my writing is I'll write along and all of a sudden I'll take a time break and go to another character. So the reader is really like, well, what's going to happen here? Okay, so you, you engage the, the reader's interest to read on, to find out, you know, where, where is this going? What's going to happen? The next book, uh, the plot basically uh, involves me because this book is about my life. These two were successful then, and I might well write one about me. So, so I did, Love and Promise. <clears throat> the reason for the, the title, when I was 16 years old um, in school, <clears throat> I had a brother who was a great athlete, a uh, very bright, bright guy, <clears throat> and um, had a scholarship, football scholarship to Syracuse University turned it down because his girlfriend got pregnant. And in those days, you married, you got a job, you supported your family, okay? I saw the same thing happen with friends and other relatives. And so I promised myself when I was 16 <clears throat> that no matter what love came into my life, no matter who came into my life, as soon as it looked like we were headed to the altar, I cut it off. And I went the other way. So uh, it's a it's and the plot here is how do I maintain that? Because a lot of young girls come into my life with whom I really have an affinity to to carry on with, but I know that I can't do that because if I do, then you know my my goal was to finish college, and I and I didn't want anything to interrupt with that. And of course. In those days, you know, a girl didn't have a lot of choices. She could either become a teacher, a secretary, a nurse, basically, or a housewife, okay? And if they didn't go on to college or further educated, you, you, you settled for being a housewife. Not that that's all bad or all wrong, but those were the choices, okay? And so when, when love came into their life, they immediately started to think about love and marriage, and children, and family, and, and you know, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. So that's the plot. The, the thing that drives this is how does Dave stay the hell out of trouble? Okay. And, and um, so we go on. The next book, very simple. I graduate from college. I started teaching. But my desire is to become a superintendent of schools. So I go back to graduate school. and. Um, and by the way, at the end of this book, I do meet a young lady after I graduate from college, and we get married. And we've been married for 50 years, and, and uh, you know, so we've been together like three years. And so life, fat, life uh, speeds up when you're having fun. But, but anyway, <laughs> she's a great lady, uh, the joy of my life. But the principal, I want to become a principal. So I come out of, out of uh, graduate school. And I take a job as a high school principal, okay? Well, my goal is to become a superintendent of school. So the plot, everything that's driven in here is for my main character to become a superintendent of school. How does he accomplish that? Uh, what, are, what are the gates that he has to go through? And what are the challenges he has to meet to go through this? Now, obviously, in every one of these books, there's a love story weaved into this thing. Because nobody wants to read, you know, statistics and yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So if, if, for instance, on the, on the back cover of this book, I say, um, uh, anyone who has become associated with high school or will be able to relate to the stories situated that are here involved. The conduct and dilemmas depicted in this novel are being played out in a school near you today. And they are, okay? 
How I know this? Because I now operate a, an educational consulting firm. Uh, and I evaluate schools. So I go into schools all, all, all over New York State. I don't go down into the city, I'm not interested in that. But for the most part in upstate New York, <coughs> I do a lot of consulting. Right now I'm involved in, in evaluating grant programs, where the state of New York will send a grant program to a school to be used in a specific way. So it's, it's categorical aid. It can only be spent in a sp specific way. My job is to go in in the fall, <coughs> review the grant, how it's set up, whether the money's going to be separate, spent properly, and then I go back in the spring. I come to Florida because I'm not staying up in New York. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I come down here to Florida, where I do a lot of my writing, and uh, then in the spring when I go back, I go back to make sure the money's been spent properly and the goals have been achieved or not achieved. And if they're not achieved, why? What do I recommend? Okay, so anyway, that's what the principles of 